Hey everyone, if you're experiencing slow performance, lagging, or freezing on your Windows 10 or 11, it could be due to several unnecessary services running in the background. You might not even be aware of these services, and even if you don't use them, they still consume valuable resources, leading to those frustrating slowdowns. In this video, I'll be sharing 19 unwanted services that you should disable right away. If you have a moment, I'd love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell icon to stay updated on all my latest videos. First, open the Task Manager and click on the Performance tab. As you can see, I have no applications running at the moment. If I walk you through the process count, you'll notice that the utilization is between 15% and 23%. The process count stands at about 188, while the thread count is around 2,107. Additionally, the handle count is roughly 80,000. The memory usage is at 30%. Our goal is to lower these numbers. Once we finish disabling the services, you should see a noticeable difference. So, remember these figures. To access your Windows services, simply click on the Windows search icon and type in services and hit enter. This will bring up the Windows service management box, where we can manage every kind of Windows service we have. We are starting with ActiveX. This is a tool that controls Internet Explorer 11. Microsoft officially stopped supporting Internet Explorer 11 on June 15, 2022, which means we can disable this feature without any worries since it's not required on our system anymore. Simply disable it. Click on Apply, then OK. Next up, let's talk about BitLocker Drive Encryption. BitLocker is a Microsoft service designed to encrypt your hard drive. However, most people don't really use it, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend it for regular users. If you're someone who hasn't used BitLocker and doesn't plan to, you can easily disable it. Set the startup type to disabled and then hit apply and OK. The next thing to consider is Bluetooth, which is optional. If you don't use Bluetooth to connect devices or transfer data, you really don't need to keep it on since it uses up a lot of resources in the background. However, if you turn off your Bluetooth and someone else needs it, it will not work for them. Personally, I use my Bluetooth a lot, so I prefer to keep it enabled. The next important service is the connected user experience and telemetry. This service sends your usage and diagnostic information to Microsoft servers, and I wouldn't suggest keeping it on. If you want to turn it off, just double click on it and set the startup type to disabled. Stop the service and then hit apply and then OK. I prefer to keep mine running. The next service we need to talk about is the Diagnostic Execution Service. All four of these services were used for troubleshooting issues on Windows 10. However, they are no longer supported on Windows 11. If you're using Windows 11, it's a good idea to disable these services. Just click on each one individually, select Disable, and then Apply, and finally click OK. Repeat this process for the other services as well. Up next is the Downloaded Maps Manager. This service gives other applications permission to access your maps. If you prefer not to share, just double-click on it to disable it. After that, click Apply and then OK. The next service we have is the Geolocation Service. This service is mainly for using map applications on your computer. Honestly, I think most people don't really use it. If you're not using any map apps, you should probably disable it. Just go ahead and disable it. Click on Stop, then Apply, and finally OK. The next service we're looking at is called NetLogon. This service is mainly for users who are part of a domain or an organization. If you're using your personal computer, you don't need to have this option turned on.
Just double click on it, disable it, and then hit apply and click OK. Next up, we have the parental control service. This service allows parents to set up a child account for monitoring. If you're not planning to use this feature, you can simply turn it off, disable it, and click on apply, and then hit OK. The next service we need to talk about is the print spooler. If you're not using a printer on your computer, you can go ahead and turn it off. But if you do use a printer, keep it enabled. Otherwise, your printer won't function properly. Disable it and click on apply and then hit OK. Up next is the remote desktop configuration. There are three of these services. These services are meant for connecting through the remote desktop application. If you don't use remote desktop services, it's highly advisable to turn them off. Doing so can help minimize hacking risks on your computer. Follow the same steps to disable any other remote desktop services as well. Disable your remote registry so no one can access your registry remotely. You can see mine is already disabled. Up next is the Windows Secondary Logon Service. It enables administrators to use a standard user account to carry out administrative duties without having to log off from their current session. Just double-click to access the settings, disable the service, click Stop, apply the changes, and then click OK. The next service is the Sensor Service. This service handles the connection with sensors such as GPS and the ambient light sensor. If you're not working with these sensors, just double click on it, select the option to disable, then apply and OK. The next service is the smart card. This includes the smart card itself, the smart card device enumeration, and the smart card removal policy. These services are primarily used for authentication with the smart card. If you log into your device using your mouse and keyboard, you don't need to keep these services running. Just double click on it to disable everything. The next service is the Sys Main. I've heard some people saying it enhances performance. For me, I can't see any difference whether it's enabled or disabled. I think I'll just keep mine the same for now. If you notice any performance improvements when it's enabled, feel free to share in the comments. Next up is the TCP IP NetBIOS Helper Service. If you aren't using a workgroup network, you should disable it. Simply double click on it, select Disable, and then hit Stop, Apply, and OK. The next service we have is the Windows Biometric Service. This service allows you to use your fingerprint to unlock features on your laptop. If you don't plan on using this service anymore, just double click on it and disable it. The next service we need to talk about is the Windows Error Reporting Service. This service is designed to capture any errors you encounter on your Windows system. When an error happens, it collects information about it and sends that data to Microsoft for further analysis. However, in my opinion, this service isn't very useful because while it sends the information, you don't actually receive any help in return. Simply double click on it, select Disable, and then Apply and OK. Up next is the wallet service. This one is all about the wallet, so if you don't have a wallet set up on your Windows 10 or 11, you don't need to keep it running. Just go ahead and disable it, apply the changes, and click OK. The last service we will talk about is the work folders. This feature lets you access your files on any PC, even if you're not connected to a domain or server. If you don't need this service, feel free to turn it off. Just click Disable, then hit Apply, and finally click OK. I did not come across the fax service. If you find it in your services, feel free to disable it and apply the changes. I also didn't notice the touch screen service. If you see it, just turn it off and don't forget to apply the changes. When you're finished, 
Go ahead and restart the computer to see how things have changed. I'll just restart my laptop real quick to observe the differences. After restarting the computer, I'm going to pull up the task manager again and take a look at the performance tab this time. Right now, the process count is at 177, which is a decrease from the previous 188. It looks like it has gone down a bit. The threat count, which was more than 2,100, is still around the same level, so there's not much change there. The handle count was about 80,000, but it has now dropped to 75,000. You can achieve this kind of difference just by disabling services you don't need. No need to worry. It won't affect your computer's performance or features. That is it for today, guys. I hope you found this information useful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next time, take care.